Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Metal Mastermind. I'm Ken Candelas, your host for today, and what we are going to be looking at is some vintage tape machines, man. So this is a really, really exciting experiment today. Um, lots of people know that back in the day, this was the format that everybody was using, and of course, it's not very easy to get your hands on one of these machines. They cost a lot, they give off a lot of heat, <laughs> meaning you need to sufficiently cool them, uh, and they take up a lot of space, right? I live in New York City, you'd be lucky to have room to stretch your legs. <laughs> so why are we even looking at tape machines then, if they're so archaic in this day and age of the wonderful modern digital world? Well, the thing is, is that tape machines have a character of sound to them that is unmistakable um, because of the magnetic oxide that's on the actual tape itself. Uh, the way that works is you have uh, basically induction and electromagnetism uh, forming the uh, oxides that's on the tape to resemble the waveform uh, that's being put onto it via electricity. So this is sort of uh, a phenomenon that has certain limitations that give off this flavor of sound. For example, people like to uh, refer to uh, tape machines as having this sort of natural warmth or saturation. Um, and that's because, well, tape machines, they're not as um, good at capturing sort of transients and detail, but they're very good at giving sort of this thickness uh, to the sound, which is very cool. Uh, and we love tape machines for that, uh, and there's a great reason to use them in your chain. Of course, though, logistically speaking, it's not very uh, economical or, <laughs> um, you know, you, re your real estate is very limited to even own one of these puppies unless you're uh, fortunate enough to do so. Um, so we have these awesome emulations out there namely by uh, companies like Universal Audio is a really big brand for this kind of thing, Slate Digital, um, even uh, Antelope, which are the three we're going to look at today, and I believe uh, Waves probably makes one. Uh, but we've got four different tape machines here. Um, what we're looking at here is the uh, Slate Digital on the bottom left. Um, this is our Virtual Tape Machines plugin which you can get, I think, if you subscribe for a year. It's 14 bucks a month for their everything bundle uh, on Gobbler, um, which I think is a steal to have any of their plugins. Uh, great, great stuff. And uh, Universal Audio on the top right uh, with the two plugins of the Ampex ATR-102, and we have our Studer A800. Uh, respectively. Uh, so, think about Universal Audio. Um, Universal Audio, you can't use their plugins unless you have Universal Audio hardware. Uh, lucky for you guys, I do have a UAD Octo PCI Express card in my machine, so I am able to run these plugins, and um, I gotta thank UA for that. Although, it is something you want to consider if you're looking to perhaps get something like this. Uh, whether you find that the Universal Audio plugins versus the Slate versus the, uh, of course, I haven't mentioned yet Antelope, but I'll get to that, um, is worth it, then this is something that might be very interesting to you. Um, now, the last but not least uh, plugin on the bottom right here is our Antelope Reel to Reel uh, tape machine emulation. Now, I want to also mention one thing. Uh, Antelope, and I've spoken with Antelope, uh, you know, I got a buddy of mine there, and I really have to stress it, is that they specifically don't make these plugins 
to be true necessarily to the original. Their goal is to try to make them better in their own way, shape, or form, however they feel that that means. So, um, same thing with Slate. Slate takes what was and tries to make their own spin off of that. Whether uh, you think it's true to the original or not, the fact of the matter is that wasn't really their goal. They wanted to create uh, something that would be an enhancement of what was. Same goes for Antelope. Uh, Universal Audio, on the other hand, uh, a good indicator, guys, for any plugin that is trying to emulate a certain hardware device is to take a look at, one, the name that they're using. Uh, for example, you have Ampex and Studer. These are both the actual names of the companies that they are emulating here, which means that this is also an approved um, license to Universal Audio for them to actually recreate their hardware into software. So the point of Universal Audio's goal here is to be as accurate to the original as possible. So if you really, really love that old Ampex or that old Studer, if you are, you know, in that era of using these machines and you wanted to implement that back into your studio, it's no question that you would go Universal Audio for this stuff. Just putting that out there. So, uh, but for most of you um, that are watching this video, you may not have had the pleasure of working with these tape machines. Um, I myself have at one point, and I'll only say once, uh, m that I've worked on myself, and that was a pain in the butt. <laughs> You've got to make sure the biases is right, and the amethyst is all lined up, and all this kind of stuff, so this does become a really, really nice convenience here to use these plugins in our mixes without ever having to set up a tape machine at all. <laughs> Uh, it's a dream come true for a lot of people. So, um, the track that we're going to listen to today is none other than Metal Mastermind's theme song. Nice and simple. We love metal, and we want to know if these plugins are worth putting on metal. Uh, now, I will say here, right off the bat, um, that the Ampex has been known to be used for like rock and roll and metal stuff, mainly because it has this sort of a bitier type of sound, um, but I digress. You'll listen and you'll make the judgment yourself. So let's take a listen just to the theme song itself. Um, this is the same theme song I've been using. Uh, you did it with the uh, Fairchild uh, 670 uh, plug-in review on the last episode that I worked on here at Metal Mastermind. Go check that out. Um, but let's listen to the theme song for a second. Let's get our palette sort of cleansed. And then we'll listen to, uh, I'll go to the Slate Digital, then I'll go to the Antelope, then I'll go to the Ampex, then I'll go to the Studer, and I'll announce every time I do that. All right, so here's the original. So the original, it's clean, it's a good mix, but, you know, why we're using a tape machine in the first place is it's a great thing to use on, like, the entire mix to give it more oomph. <clears throat> so let's listen to the mix again, and I'm going to activate the Slate Digital uh, kind of halfway through. You'll see it kick on. It's the bottom left plugin here. Highlight that one more time. Okay, so Slate Digital probably heard a little bit of a volume bump, um, but a little bit more of this kind of thickness added to the signal, although it's pretty subtle, I must admit. Let's listen to it one more time, and I'll turn it off uh, so that you can get an idea of what's happening here.
Oh yeah, there is this sort of mid-range, low mid that kind of gets pushed forward a little bit. It's a little bit more in your face on that. Um, gotta say, I really do like the virtual tape machine. Outstanding work. It's just enough color to enhance whatever you might be doing. Um, of course, if you had problems in those areas of the mix, it might reveal them more so. So, one thing to know. All right, let's uh, move on to the Antelope. Uh, now, the Antelope, uh, there are actually four different settings. We're going to be listening to the third one primarily. I'll switch between them a little bit so you can hear what they're all about. Um, but the others seem to be more of an emulation of like maybe cassettes or, you know, different types of other tape machines. But the third one seems to be the closest to what we would in like the studio. So let's take a listen to that. Let me turn this puppy on. Uh, here we go. Okay, so right off the bat, more bass, <laughs> um, which is cool. I think uh, Antelope has always been, in my opinion, I, every time I've ever used their plugins, it's always got this sense of bigness to them, which I'm a fan of. I mean, I love writing like cinematic metal and this kind of stuff, so <laughs> I'm kind of a little biased to that, but... It's definitely apparent, and that might not be what you're looking for when you're working on any of your pieces of music. Although, um, I guess most of people nowadays do like more bass. Let's listen to it one more time, and let's compare between the virtual tape machine from Slate Digital uh, over to Antelope. So first we'll listen to Antelope, and then I'll uh, replay the track, and we'll go to the Slate Digital. Right, so there's a big difference here. Um, I feel the antelope actually kind of tones down the brightness of the track a little bit, makes it a little darker. Uh, and that virtual tape machine actually kind of brings a little bit more of that shimmerness to it. Um, my personal opinion, I'm kind of liking the Slate Digital a little more. Um, let's see how all of this compares to the Ampex and the Studer. Uh, so, Let's just listen to the track without all of the plugins one more time just to cleanse our palette. Then I will play it to the Ampex and follow to the Studer afterwards. Right, you probably heard a little bit of that Ampex kick in at the end. Whoa. <laughs> Let's listen one more time. Yeah, man, I could totally see why they use this for metal and rock, dude. This is such a... That is the vibe for metal here. Uh, you want to have that edginess, you know, up front, in your face. Um, I gotta say, I love Big Bottom, but man, when it comes to metal and rock, you want that sort of kind of there. <laughs> um, I'm loving it. This is already my by far my fa most favorite plugin of all of these for the context of rock and metal. Wouldn't say the same for anything else. Um, of course, you'd have to listen and test it for yourself. But this is metal, right? Like We're trying to find the best tape machine for metal, right? All right. Let's listen to the Studer now. 
and then we'll compare between the Ampex and the Studer. The Studer has kind of been always known as like one of the big premier uh, sort of studio tape machines, uh, mainly because it's so versatile and well-rounded. Um, so let's go ahead and see what it does for us when it comes to metal. Again, I'm gonna play it raw and then I'll turn the Studer on and then we'll listen again. Wow. <laughs> One more time. Dope. Uh, so this one is actually a little bit similar to the antelope one, but I feel like it has a bit more middle ground. Um, between that and the virtual tape machine, I would say. It's actually kind of similar to the virtual tape machine. I'm not even sure if the virtual tape machine was sort of trying to emulate that. Um, I could be wrong. But let's uh, compare the Ampex to the Studer. Let's see what that does for us. Uh, I'll play the Studer first, and then I'll move on to the Ampex. Wow. Okay. So, you know, for some people, the Ampex might be a little bit too harsh for them. And I could see why they might even say that. Um, the Studer sounds more balanced. There's a little bit more heaviness, um, which is missing from the Ampex, uh, I must say. Let's compare the Studer to the Antelope. Here we go. Yeah, man, that Studer really takes the cake on that one. Um, the Studer is just... Mm, it's got better response on the high end. Uh, the reel-to-reel -reel from Antelope just emphasizes bass a lot more. Um, so, hey, trying to be as objective as possible here. Um, now, let's compare the Studer uh, to the virtual tape machine from Slate. Listening to the Studer first. Let's try that again. I totally screwed that up. <laughs> Studer from the top. Yeah, so the VTM definitely seems to try and emulate the Studer the most here. Um, although I think the Studer still has better spread with the stereo imaging um, and just a little bit more clarity in that mid-range. I feel like the mid-range is just slightly lost with the VTM. Although, I mean, for the money that you're getting for the VTM, you're like really close to using the Studer here. Um, so, when it comes to the bang for the buck, man, like the VTM, hands down, the winner. Uh, it's got the most value for the buck. It sounds the most balanced in comparison to all of these. Um, but if you just want that edge, man, like just to put it a little over the top, and if you got it, go for the Studer, man. You can't go wrong. I feel like out of all of these, the Studer's probably the king of them. And... It's, it has been in the studio for good reason. Uh, but hey, for for rock and metal, and if you want that little bit more of that uh, uh, edge and crispiness to come through and 
crunchiness, then that Ampex really does the job. I just don't think for this type of music, uh, Antelope's reel to reel really kind of matches up. But I said we would listen to the other uh, settings on the Antelope. Let's just see what it's going to offer. Uh, although I think there, from when I was listening before, it sounded a little bit more of like a lo-fi effect. So here we go. This is the type three, which is what we've been listening to. And then I will cycle through all the other ones. more time. All right, here is type one. Type two. And here is type four. I'm really curious to see how Type 4 stacks up against the Ampex. I feel like it's got a little bit more of a similar timbre to that. Um, let's just do a quick listen. Let's see what they are doing. I have to I have to apologize because I sometimes forget whether one plugin's on or one plugin's off. There's four plugins on screen, so forgive me if I do any errors of that sort. All right, so let's listen to Type 4 one more time. Uh, and in the middle, I'm going to switch over to the Ampex, see what that does for us. Yeah, I, I still don't think it's really a match for Ampex here. Um, that for me to say, I love Antelope, man. I'm a big fan of their stuff, but the real to real is not up to par with, I think, some of the competition that's out there. Um, that's just my honest review. This is not sponsored by Antelope by any means, even though I am a heavily, uh, I heavily use Antelope in my in my equipment. Um, that being said, this is as honest of a review as I can get um, to you guys. Please let me know what your thoughts are. Did I miss anything? Uh, there's a lot to play with here. Uh, so when you are going to kind of shop around for tape machines to add to your arsenal of plugins, uh, just keep in mind that everything has a purpose for what they were designed for. Um, I hope that this review seeks to help you define um, which one you were thinking of doing. Uh, just for funs and giggles at the end of all of this, I'm going to, there are other tapes, uh, actual tape discs <laughs> uh, that you could actually change the flange here. For example, on the Studer, uh, I can change the type of tape. You see how the image sort of uh, changes color and goes to a different type of tape. And that will also change the timbre too. So I'll play around with that. I'll play through it. You can listen to what it's doing to the signal. Um, I don't believe the Studer... As, oh, it does. So the Studer, I mean, the uh, Ampex also has the same uh, uh, function here. Um, that might be the thing that helps you, you know, to choose one over the other. Uh, so we heard it with Antelope. There should be no reason why uh, we shouldn't hear it from the other ones. The only thing that is missing from the Slate Digital 
is that ability to switch between uh, multiple tapes. There is another tape on it, but it's not... There, it, there's only two tape options here. You can't change... Um, like four other tapes like the other ones have. Uh, however, I will give it uh, the fact that you can change the machine type, which is really cool. So you have the either half inch two track, which is what we've been listening to, or you can run it through a machine type that has two inch 16 track, which is kind of cool, which does have a different flavor to it. Um, so, the rest of this video will just be listening to which type of uh, machines are... Uh, uh, well, listen to the, which type of tapes are being used on which machines. So let's start with the Slate Digital since that's the, the latest one I just talked about. And then we'll cycle through the other ones. So I felt like with the Slate Digital, the 16 track had a little bit more bottom. Um, I felt like the other tape setting that I was I started off with, which was the FG456, had a little bit more of a uh, harshness to it rather than the FG9 versus, uh, which is um, kind of emulating what we got over here. We have the 456 on the Ampex as well, uh, which is pretty neat. And we also have a 456 on the Studer. Um, so, and we also have a G9 as well on the Ampex. And you also have a GP9, sorry, GP9 um, on the Studer. So let's just quickly listen to all, uh, all three of those in comparison and uh, you can make a judgment for yourself. I'll keep it to the two track for now. And I really love that Studer. <laughs> Let's do the 456. Starting again from Slate to Ampex to Studer. Using the 456, I was really digging the Ampex version of that. That's just my opinion. Um, and I think that's probably more than enough to listen to. Uh, if you guys have any other questions or comments, please leave a comment in the section in the comment section below. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if this helped you. There are more videos like this coming out every week from Metal Mastermind to you guys. And if you haven't checked it out already, if you're interested in this kind of stuff with production, uh, especially of doing your own music, Metal Mastermind has a free guide to the ultimate home studio. It's a quick guide to the ultimate home studio, which will give you all the information that you need in order to build your own studio uh, without the fluff. So you'll get, um, you know, Things like what kind of computer should you buy, uh, how to look at acoustic treatment, what type of microphone should you buy, etc. Uh, it's free. It's about 16 pages, but it's an easy read with pictures and stuff because we're just like, yeah, metalheads, or we bump our heads in the mosh pit, so we don't want to read a lot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know a lot of metalheads who are very, very intelligent. Uh, so, guys, please uh, check it out. It's a really good read. I hope that it helps you and it will uh, help our channel to grow uh, and reach more people. So stay tuned for our next live session this coming Wednesday at 12 o'clock. See you then.